Hi everyone, my name is Brittany and welcome back to Untitled Thoughts. So today is my birthday, yay! So I'm actually turning 30 this year and I am so incredibly excited about that. I have wanted to turn 30 since I was like, 18. I just have always imagined that being in my 30s, I would feel much more confident and be able to tackle the world and be able to share my voice a little bit more. And so I'm just really excited about what the next phase of my life holds for me in my 30s. Because I'm turning 30 this year, I really wanted to do something special, but still kind of low key. So my husband and I actually traveled to Asheville for a couple of days and stayed in the cutest Airbnb I have ever seen. When I saw it online, I immediately knew that this was the place that I wanted to be for my 30th. One, because I absolutely love Asheville, the city. And two, this suite was actually called the Dressmaker Suite and there are vintage like sewing machines and furniture and mannequins and i was just like this is this is like a dream come true so i'm really excited that we were able to spend a couple of days just kind of unwinding and relaxing i also really wanted to sew up something special for my 30th birthday usually i don't do anything for my birthdays but this year i thought that you know what, why not sew something to commemorate the fact that I've turned 30? So I decided to combine two of my favorite patterns, which are the Rose Cafe dress and bustier, as well as my Amelie dress. So I took the bodice of the Rose Cafe dress and then the skirt of the Amelie and I mashed them together and I came out with the most beautiful dress ever. I absolutely love it. And I thought that it would be a lot of fun to just kind of share the process of creating my dress with you all. So let's get started. Good morning. It is officially Monday and that means it is the start of the week when I have all my energy. So I am super excited that this week I will be working on my birthday dress. I'm going to get started on that today. I think that the very first thing I want to do is obviously <laughs> decide whether I'm going to put the buttons in the front of my dress or the back of my dress because that's going to determine how I alter the um, bustier pattern that I'm using by Daria Pattern Making. I've mentioned that pattern a lot on this channel before and it's truly just an amazing, endlessly hackable pattern that I absolutely love. So I just have to figure that out. And then the first thing I'll do is alter my pattern pieces and then cut out my fabric. Yeah, and I've got a really great fabric too. Really, really awesome. I thrifted a beautiful floral linen, which I have been saving exactly for this project. I don't know how much I will be getting done in one day because I am watching my friend's dog and he is super cute, but he's also a lot of energy. So we're just going to take the day as it comes and see what happens. <laughs> Say hi to everyone, Cookie. Oh. <laughs> What a cutie, aren't you such a cutie? Say hi everyone. Oh, you got fluff in your mouth. <laughs> so the only piece I need to adjust for either pattern is the back panel of the rose bustier. I will just be extending the center back of the pattern out to accommodate buttons as I did decide to put my buttons to the back of the dress. To start, I just taped the pattern piece down to a scrap of paper. So I just need to figure out how much I actually need to extend this back piece so that it matches up with the skirt placket. So I wound up measuring the skirt placket piece, doing a bit of math with the seam allowances and adding an additional two inches or five centimeters to the center back of the bodice. Once everything was marked, I cut out my new pattern piece and gathered the skirt pieces to lay everything out. I am very visual and need to see how the pattern might come together right in front of me. Once I felt everything looked good, I went ahead and added buttonhole marks. Because this is a fitted bodice, I spaced my buttonholes about an inch or 2.5 centimeters apart to ensure that I had enough buttons to keep my bodice firmly in place while being worn. 
And this is what the final back pattern piece looks like. I extended it and added all of my buttonhole markings. The next step is to measure the waist of both the bodice pieces and the waistband pieces to make sure they match and make my final adjustments to the pattern before cutting it out of my linen fabric. So I was only a quarter of an inch different between the two patterns. So what I decided to do, which is a half an inch overall, because this is only on the half. So oh, what I decided to do was I just took an eighth of an inch off of two of the waistlines at the front of this pattern. So I just tapered it from the original seam and took the eighth of an inch off down here and I'll cut this off and that will give me the exact 16 inch measurement on the half for each of these patterns. So yeah, that was a really easy adjustment. All right, so all of my pattern pieces have been adjusted and thankfully there weren't that many alterations that I needed to do to get these two patterns to actually fit together. Now I am just going to gather all of my materials and I guess start cutting out my fabric, which is great. I think that if I play my cards right, I might actually get this project done relatively quickly, which is exciting. So I will meet you back at my cutting table with all of my necessary supplies. So now I have everything that I can think of for this dress all laid out in one place. I hope I'm not forgetting anything. I've got my pattern pieces, the interfacing I'm going to be using, which is my favorite sew-in interfacing, buttons, I think I'll probably need like a million buttons for this, my fabric, boning, boning tips, underwire, everything. So I guess now I just need to get started and the first step is going to be to cut out all of my fabric. I decided to cut out my largest pieces first, which are the Amelie skirt pieces. They're so big that they barely fit on my cutting table, let alone in the camera frame. But I chose to cut these out first as the bustier pattern pieces are easy to cut from any scrappy bits left over from the fabric. With the largest pieces cut, it was time to play a bit of Tetris with the remaining bodice pieces, which I always find really fun. With the main fabric cut out, it was time to move on to cutting out the silk layer. Usually I prefer to cut silk with a rotary cutter, but I don't have a mat that will fit on this particular table. So instead, I just went really, really slowly with pinning and marking and cutting each piece. I wound up stretching a lot throughout cutting as this table is very low for me and my poor back was feeling it. I wound up running out of the cream silk charmeuse fabric, but thankfully I had a scrap piece of the same fabric I had dyed in like a pinkish color, which I was able to use for my final inner bodice pieces. With all of my silk cut, it was time to cut out the final coatil layer. The end of cutting is in sight. Just one more round of extreme Tetris to go. <sighs> I thought I would take a quick break by our pond. Um, I've been cutting for so long, it seems, a couple hours. So I managed to cut out all of the material for the skirt and the bodice. The silk, as I showed, was missing like one panel where I absolutely needed to cut it from a different fabric, but that's not that big of a deal. And then I went on to the cotill layer, which was working out really well. I had to Tetris the heck out of it though in order for all the pieces to fit, except one. One piece did not fit in the coatil from cutting out. So what I think I'm going to do is after I take this really relaxing break 
is I'm going to piece together the scrap cotill fabric to get that one last piece out because it's a really important piece. It's like at the center front of the bodice. So I absolutely need that. So yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do next. All right, so I managed to piece together some pieces of cotill to make the second one of this center front bodice that I needed. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just do like a zigzag stitch over this and this and then trim up the back side um, just so that it doesn't create too much bulk in here because I think that if I were to seam it together, it would create too much bulk basically, yeah. Um, so that's what I think I'm going to do and that means that I have successfully cut out all of my pieces. Now on to interfacing. <laughs> so I managed to cut out all of my fabric which I'm super excited about but now I have to decide whether or not I'm going to continue on with sewing today and I don't think that I am. It's getting, it's not super late, but I am getting really tired after having stood for so long to cut out all of these pieces. So yeah, I think I'm going to call it a day and pick up with sewing tomorrow morning and just kind of see how far I get. Uh, with everything cut out, I actually think that I can possibly get pretty far. I guess we will just have to wait and see tomorrow. All right, so it is officially day two of the birthday dress sewing. I am going to dive right into actually sewing the garment today. And if all goes according to plan, maybe it'll be done today. Maybe? I don't know. I am just going to again take it as it comes and see what happens, but I am super excited to get started and yeah, yeah. All right, let's get into sewing. To start, I decided to sew up everything I could on the skirt. When I first started, I figured I could possibly finish the skirt in its entirety before even touching the bodice. That's not what wound up happening, but it was a good jumping off point. I decided to do French seams on my skirt as it's the only portion where the inner seams will be sewn. So I will basically be sewing my skirt together twice by the end of this project. Time for a quick tea break before tackling the next part. And now it's onto the bodice cups. For the cups, I tend to always get mine mixed up because they look so similar. My trick is to put a pin on the cup that will sit near the center front of the bodice. That way, when it comes to attaching these cups at a later point and keeping everything in the right place, I have a little reminder of what goes where. And this is especially important as I'm working with four separate cup pieces. With my cups and bodice pieces all pinned, it's time to start sewing the bodice together. Once the silk and linen layers of the bodice were complete, I turned my attention to the cotille layer. To start, I sewed together the bodice that I had pinned together yesterday with a simple zigzag stitch. This is what it looked like when it was all complete, nice and flat with minimum bulk. I then finished sewing up the remaining cotille pieces. With all of the bodice pieces sewn together, it was time to press everything. I started with the cotille layer as I absolutely love any excuse to use my Taylor's Point Press, which gets the seams of my fabric super flat. Then it was on to pressing the remaining bodice pieces. So I've just realized that, hey, Cookie, hey, you want to say hi? Say hi, Cookie. Hi. <laughs> so I have just realized that I originally wanted to put pockets into this dress, but I never cut out the actual pocket pieces because I didn't have enough fabric to do that. So now I'm wondering 
if I should just omit them, which I may regret later, but I also don't feel like doing French seams with a pocket. I mean, I can, it's just like kind of a hassle. So I think I might just skip pockets this time. It might be the best decision I make and it might also be the worst. So <laughs> we'll see. Cookie, are you gonna help me sew the rest of this dress? Yeah? You gonna help me sew the rest of the dress? <laughs> After contemplating it a bit more, I decided to just forge ahead without adding pockets to my skirt pieces. That meant finishing up the French seams I had already started and getting the front and back skirt together. With the skirt coming together, it was time to press those seams. I absolutely adore how wonderfully linen presses, don't you? After pressing, I set my skirt aside for the time being and turned my attention back to the bodice cups. Honestly, even though there were only four cups to sew, it felt like I had sewn a hundred by the end of the day. And then the final step of pressing the cups into a nice smooth shape. I love my pressing ham for tasks like this. I have heard that there are specific hams called boob hams for projects such as this. I may need to look into purchasing one for myself one day. All right, so it's now 11 o'clock and um, I have managed to get the bodice and the skirt primarily sewn up. They're not entirely done, but they are getting pretty close. So I'm just going to take a break now. I'm outside um, with the dog and we're going to relax a little bit. Then I'll make lunch, then I'll get back to sewing. And maybe by the end of today, I'll have like the bodice and the skirt complete, but not put together. I don't know, I guess we'll see. After lunch, I decided to take some time to make myself a cup of spiced tea. It's important to take little breaks throughout the sewing process to keep from getting frustrated. Plus, it's small moments like these that remind me to enjoy the process instead of trying to rush to the finish. It's why I try to include little reminders to take breaks in my own sewing patterns. I want the process to be fun and fulfilling instead of upsetting or frustrating. Once I was feeling relaxed and ready to continue tackling the dress, I jumped right into prepping the bodice strap. I honestly created these straps using the last remaining bits of scraps of fabric, and it was just barely enough for this project. It's why my final dress has such itty bitty bows. I pressed and sewed my straps just as I would bias tape as I didn't want to attempt to turn out such a loose weave of fabric through a tiny tube as you would a traditional strap. With my straps done and out of the way, I turned the rest of my attention to prepping the bodice for spiral steel boning. The first step was to cut out the boning casing. For this project, I wound up using some hand-dyed organza as it is both lightweight and super strong. This is the same material I used on the inside of my wedding dress. With my casings prepped, it was time to pin them into place along the seam lines of the cotille. and then sew them into place along three edges, leaving the bottom open. So for this next step, I won't go into too much detail only because I go over working with spiral steel boning and how to cut it and attach the tips in this DIY fantasy gown tutorial. But the short version of what I'm doing is this. 
I'm basically cutting my spiral steel boning to size for each individual casing I just sewed onto my cotill layer. Then I'm adding boning tips to either end so that the steel doesn't tear through the fabric. And for further protection, I'm wrapping each end with biodegradable tape before sliding them into their individual casings and then sewing those casings closed. I purchased all of my supplies for corsetry, including the cotill from corsetmaking.com. I always purchase the spiral steel boning from their remnants section as I believe it is discounted and I have found that you can make a few yards last a long time. When working with metal boning, you definitely want to be careful as it is rather strong and when you clip the ends of it, pieces can go flying. So be sure to wear protective gear, especially if you've never worked with it before. And here's what it looks like. So that's it for day two. Good morning. It is officially day three of sewing my birthday dress and I am super excited. I actually took a couple of days off from working on this dress just because it was like really rainy kind of gloomy um so yeah I'm back at it today though it's Friday and it's a beautiful day out the sun is shining and I just think it's the perfect day to finish up this dress so what I left off with last time was I had finished the entire under portion of the bodice I had boned that and then I attached the skirt to that the cups are done as well as the straps so now it's just attaching the straps to the under bodice adding buttons and hemming the skirt which I will talk about a little bit later um, what I'm going to be doing with hemming the skirt and yeah so I'm super excited and let's just get started before attaching the cups to the bodice I'm going to go ahead and sew on the underwire channeling in the same way that is suggested by Daria in her sew along tutorial I'm using two different colors of underwire channeling as I didn't have enough of just one color for this project and I really wanted to use what was already in my stash it's little quirks like this that make my dress extra special Now it's time to attach the cups to the dress. First, I press the bodice of the dress one final time to make sure the lining wasn't peeking out too much. And then I got distracted and pinned the lining along the waist edge to hide the raw seams before finally pinning the cups into place. And here's how it's looking so far. Time to sew these cups into place. My apologies for constantly putting my head in front of the camera. I was trying to make sure I wasn't shifting the cups as I sewed. I think I might be having an off sewing day. <laughs> because everything is so much harder than it should be. Uh, I just wound up sewing my strap to the inside of my bodice. So hopefully the rest of the day gets a little bit easier. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, the rest of the day was pretty challenging and I even wound up having a good cry. Have you ever had those days where one thing goes slightly wrong and then it just keeps building until you burst? That was me on this Friday. But I managed to eventually come back and work things out when I was feeling a bit calmer. Hand sewing the bottom edge of my underwire channeling helped, especially after having messed it up three times prior on the machine and having to rip it all out again and again.
With the underwire portion complete and myself now fully calm, it was time to sew on some buttonholes. A lot of buttonholes actually. <laughs> I think I wound up sewing close to 20. They weren't all perfect, but they were close enough and that's okay. The last step prior to hemming was to attach my buttons. I wound up using some lovely lilac buttons for my own stash. These were buttons I had made from scraps in my studio and I have approximately 1 million of them still. I have managed to finish everything on this dress except for the hem and um, I had talked a little bit in the morning about how I'm going to let the dress hang. So basically what letting a dress hang is is literally exactly how it sounds. You let the dress hang on a hanger or put up on a mannequin or something like that and that allows a bias cut skirt hem to drop over the following days. So that's what I'm doing. If you wanna find out more about how I let my dresses hang, you can check out this video above. I go over it in more detail in the Amelie So Long. So yeah, in just a few days, the dress will be finished and then we'll be off for my 30th birthday to Asheville, which I'm super excited about. And yeah, I'll share all of those videos and everything from that trip with you here. Thank you all so much for joining me for this impromptu casual sew with me for my 30th birthday celebration. I hope that you enjoyed tagging along as I made this dress and I just absolutely love how it turned out. I'm super excited to be able to wear this for many, many years and to always look at it and be like, hey, that's that dress that I made for my 30th birthday. If you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe, and I guess I will see you all next time. Bye!